see those actors who have like the one tear going down and the stoic look as they look up at the sun or something and they they got the big eyes and the beautiful face and the one tear no it's not <laughs> i got the slanty eyes and the crunchy face and like that Gosh, you got so many things going on, but you know, not the least of which is a Christmas story Christmas. Yeah. Uh, which man, I've already watched a couple of times. I watched it again just last night because I was so excited. Uh uh did, did you ever imagine that that the story would continue this way? Like, was there ever a, a hope in your mind or an idea that 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 this version of a sequel would happen? Um yes and no. Okay. You know, there had been so many conversations about there being follow up film to the original Christmas story. And then there had been a lot of options tossed out there and even a TV series. And um, they didn't work. They weren't the right voice. Mm. Um, so, you know, we'd gone through this multiple times where it was yes and no. And it was on it was on deck. And then the writing just wasn't there. Mm. And. It wasn't until this one that it really all came together. It all gelled. Yeah. So it's it's uh it's a very happy surprise. It is. Have 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 you been pleased to see the the response from fans out there? Because yeah, really praised. Yeah, it, it's it's um, you know, there's there's a multiple levels to the movie. There's a level where if you've never seen the original Christmas Story and you just want some something funny and sweet for Christmas, it works. Mm -hmm. Um. Then there's a whole different other level that connects not only to the original film, but also more so to the original fans. And what I mean by that is people who grew up knowing it and then are grownups now yeah. and their lives are changing as you grow up, which is what happens in life. <laughs> and it actually addresses that in a way that is timeless. You know, it's, it's always going to be that process that you go through in your life. Um, I mean, without giving away any spoilers. Sure. The thing I loved about the first movie, about a Christmas story that I think made it so <clears throat> classic, mm -hmm. uh, so relevant, is that, look, there was no Santa Claus flying through the air with uh, um, uh, elves doing things in 30 seconds and traveling around the world and flying reindeer and, and bags of gifts that were endless and all the mythology of christmas there was mm -hmm. none of that but there was magic mm -hmm. there was real magic in the sense that it came from people's imaginations from a little boy and how he lived his life so the crazy thing about a christmas story is that it is a christmas film filled with hope filled with passion and a family coming together and the magic is in each of the characters without getting silly about it it's very honest very real and I think that's why people connect to it. And the sequel or A Christmas Story Christmas um, carries that tradition. And it's something that as you get older, you will connect with it more. Mm -hmm. And it will tell more of your life story, uh, whether you want it to or not. And I think that's the beauty of a great movie is the more you watch it, the more you connect with it, the more you see. And I think they did a wonderful job in in making that happen, uh, especially in an environment which has been uh, difficult for filmmakers to make films that are not made by committee. Mm. So, you know, you have a lot of people you have to please nowadays. You have to walk very careful lines about how you express things. And, and I think that's very important. And at the same time, you have to understand those rules and regulations in order to be inclusive. Uh, in, in a very positive, at the same time, um, not dumb down the messaging. And I think no matter who you are, where you come from, even if you're not someone who celebrates Christmas, the story behind both a Christmas story and a Christmas story Christmas is really about the family. Mm. And they're, and Christmas is just the time stamp that it's wrapped around. Sure. And these are moments in people's lives. Yeah. I think that's the connective tissue that really, really works. I'm very proud. Yeah, you should be. It's a phenomenal film, and and Thanks. and you're right. It is. It is really interesting to be able to make such an incredible, unique, and uh, uh, captivating story 
within a franchise in this time. Yeah. You know what I mean? That we live in an era of make a franchise movie to make money. And, yeah. and it's not that a Christmas story Christmas is, is it lacks any level of success, but it is a very, very interesting and compelling and heartfelt story, yeah. which you wouldn't imagine <laughs> getting to do with a franchise in, in this time. <laughs> yeah. And that's when they did it. That's how they did it. Right. Is because they continued the voice of Gene Shepard and Bob Clark. And yeah. that's, I'm, Again, I'm very grateful right. that what happened, you know? Hey, I, I, all of all of us fans are also very great. Awesome. Uh, I'm curious, Zach, I, you know, do you remember a time before A Christmas Story and what those Christmases were like for you as yeah. compared to how they changed <laughs> after the original movie came out? Um, so when the original film came out, aired, um, I was living in Toronto, Canada, and I did not go to the premiere. I was not working in Hollywood. I was a child actor in Toronto. And um, any monies that I made went to the luxuries of uh, rent and food <laughs> and um, heating bills. It was broke, dude. So um, it uh, my Christmases sucked. I hated Christmas. I oh, wow. hated Christmas. Christmas when you're broke is the thing that everybody else talks about and shows up at school with their cool presents. And they're like, what did you get? And you're like, um, I, I pass do notice. <laughs> yeah. I, I this is not fun. I got to me. keep my heat an extra month. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we didn't freeze to death. There was, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it always felt very, uh, disappointing. And really, it wasn't until the 20th anniversary of A Christmas Story that I really was aware of machinery moving forward, how much it had built this uh, reputation up in the United States and Canada. And so for me, really, Christmas has gotten so much better because my Christmas, Christmas experience is spending time with fans, doing charity fundraisers, getting to hear their stories. Um and that's this wonderful communal sense of interacting with people who are telling you about how wonderful it is to see you. They've never met you before. And <laughs> they're you like a, a long lost relative. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. That's my favorite part of Christmas. Was it, was it surprising to realize that you'd spent so many Christmas with so many people you didn't know? <laughs> oh yeah. I've gotten used to it, man. I've gotten used to it. <laughs> But it's pretty cool. They basically treat me like Norm from Cheers, if anybody. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Like just complete strangers see me and go, hey, and I'm like, we've never met, but hello. Nice to meet you. That's so cool. And you mentioned uh, the, the fundraiser thing, and I'd love to hear more about that so we can share that with our, our readers and our viewers. You're going to be doing sure. another uh, fundraising event in Cleveland at the original house coming up and you're here in just a couple of weeks. Yeah. December 17th. Uh, Saturday, December 17th, I will be at the Christmas Story House in Cleveland, Ohio, from 10 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I will be signing autographs and taking photos, which will look amazing. we got this great uh, photo background, so it will turn it into a part for the family. Uh, and that's all for free. And um, the goal is that people, if they can, please donate to the Alzheimer's Association. The Alzheimer's Association will be there. Um, as well as um, if you can't make donations because you don't have any money, and I totally understand that situation, um, then please just spread the word. There's a lot of people out there who need help. My father uh, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's two years ago. He's stage six now, which is basically a walking coma. And uh, it's sad. It's depressing. It's overwhelming. It's heartbreaking. It is a nightmare. And... Um, People need help with it. It is it is just life crushing. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of people out there who could use some help. Yeah. And by supporting the Alzheimer's Association, those people can make a phone call. It like when one person has Alzheimer's, it ends up taking like two to four people to take care of them. And those people are now losing money, losing time, losing their lives to take care of this one person. It's not that one person's fault, but it's hard. And so these Anybody who's a caretaker for someone with dementia uh, realizes it, it is overwhelming, man. So you need someone that you can talk to and just unravel on and then regroup and go back at it and take care of somebody that you love while they melt 
inside their brains. And it's not to make this overly sad. Uh, sure, no, no. Alzheimer's sucks. Yeah. If I could murder it, I would murder Alzheimer's. <laughs> um, and hopefully we can find a solution and, and fix this because eventually everybody who watches this will be older than they are now. Oh, oh no. And uh, it, it's coming for you one way or the other. So it, it would be great if we could kick its butt before it gets to us. I, and I, they're I, the people who are dealing with it now. I completely agree with you. I, I've been, there's a question I, that I want to ask. I'm trying to think of the best way to ask it. But I think a common question in a situation like yours is uh, how you being a voice for families uh, affected by Alzheimer's has, you know, impacted the people around you. But what I'm curious about is how has it affected you to do these events, to do these charities and interact with other people who come up to you and say, I, I'm also part of a family that's impacted by Alzheimer's. You know, it's, it's a hard one, man. It, it's, um, the, the people who go through this, you, you, we know each other. Like yeah. we, when we see each other, eh, it's hard not to get emotional about it. When we see each other, there's a connection because there's just an ongoing pain that doesn't go away. And it's really frustrating. It's like, um, it's like knowing you're about to drive off a cliff and you can't stop the car. Um, so when you get to talk to these people, you get to share this thing. If you people can relate to, if they haven't gone through it. And so at least it's a place to let that all out. Um, I've gotten the, uh, yeah, this is emotional for me. So I'm sorry. No, I don't. Um, Perfectly fine. It's a, it's a cathartic experience. It helps people deal with their pain and it also helps find solutions. So it is painful. And I got to be honest, sometimes it's overwhelming, um, but I'm not really doing it for me. Obviously I'm doing it because, you know, I'm 53 years old. I've been a working actor all my life. I'm a character actor. I'm not Tom Cruise. I don't have millions of dollars. I don't, I can't throw cash at uh, scientists to create solutions this is the one thing I can do and maybe it's a good thing. And then that's what I got. Um, if I don't do it, I kind of feel like I'd be a douche. And, uh, you know, when it comes between douche or no douche, don't be a douche. So I'm trying not to be. A douche. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make jokes because otherwise getting into the show sure. sometimes makes me cry. And I don't want to do that because yeah. I'm not a pretty crier. I <laughs> You know, you see those actors who have like the one tear going down and the stoic look as they look up at the sun or something and they, they got the big eyes and the beautiful face and the one tear. No, it's not. <laughs> I got the slanty eyes and the crunchy face and like, mm. like I just. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's keep this moving along in a positive Absolutely. way. So I don't crack <laughs> my pants on a Zoom. <laughs> look, I, I, look, I think. Your words are important. Everything you have to say is important. Uh, I think you are saying things that make people feel less alone in the world. Yeah. Being, being someone who says, here I am, I'm affected by this, my family's affected by this, I think that helps people. We like to not feel like we're the only ones going right. through something. And I would say that that's true for being an ugly crier too. There are ugly criers out there who want to know <laughs> they're not alone in the world. <laughs> we should have a competition. I think, I think we should have an ugly crier cry off. That's a good that idea. Would, that would be good. I like that. Then we For Alzheimer's to... charity. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's actually a pretty funny idea. Because I am an ugly crier. The oh. Ugly cry off. <laughs> oh, ugly cry off. Oh, it's, you know, dude, it's not good. <laughs> now okay. starts pulling down. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> it's horrible. I don't, I don't want to, I de well, I definitely don't want to push you any further in that direction. Um, the last thing, the last thing that I want to, that I want to bring up before we, uh, before our time is up. Uh, so last year you were in a movie with the iconic Bruce Willis. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what was the name of the movie? I'm sorry. Killing. Survive the, uh, survive the game. Survive the, I, almost, I kept trying to call killing field and then it. Okay. And survive that, the game. Yes. Survive the game. I kept wanting to say, I couldn't spit out because I kept wanting to say surviving the game. And I'm like, that's an ice tea movie. Like that's not the right movie. But I don't know. What, what I want to ask you is this die hard. Where do you fall? Is it a yeah. Christmas movie? Is it not a Christmas movie? Oh, it's a Christmas movie. It's okay. A Christmas movie. All right. 
there's been deep research into that script. I mean, I mean, look, she he, he shows up to see his ex-wife, okay. soon to be ex-wife. They're not divorced yet, I think. Yeah, and then be. she is working her way up in the in the company, gets the gold watch, right? right? It's a symbol that she sacrificed her family basically for the gold. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the movie, the the Hans is holding on to the watch and releases the clasp and he falls to his death. So it's her releasing, making a decision about what matters to her. They're like, there's like thesis is yeah. thesi yeah. on, on this movie script because of the layering and everything that it means. Plus it's a kick-ass great film. So <laughs> Agreed. Definitely, definitely a Christmas movie. Absolutely. Okay. hundred percent. I'm with you and I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Zach, you are the coolest. I really, really uh, appreciate you taking time to chat today, man. Honestly, sincerely. Uh, uh, and that is December 17th, correct? December 17th at the December Christmas house and wait for it more December 18th at the Highland theater in Akron, Ohio, there will be a free screening of a Christmas story, Christmas. Oh, very kindly donated by Warner Brothers and HBO so that everybody can come and see the film for free. Make a charitable donation to Alzheimer's, you cheapies. So, yeah. And it's a... It's yeah, also, you heard Yeah, it. come on. But well, come on. Um, <laughs> that's coming for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's at 11 o'clock in the morning in Akron, Ohio on Sunday, December 18th. 